So, Mark, at the end of October, October 31st to be exact. Halloween, things you do at the end of the month, uh, pumpkin uh, picking, uh, pumpkin carving. Uh, Keep going. Uh, uh, hockey season. Uh, I'm Keep just going. naming things. I'm just all naming good, things off on your screen right now. Things that are all, behind you. All good things, but Mark. Yes. East of the River Comic Book and Collectible Show was back at the American oh, Legion. Oh yeah. In Enfield, Connecticut, we haven't had a show in Enfield since February of 2020. Wow, that feels like a long time ago. It was. It is a very long time ago. <laughs> uh, it's going to be starting at 10 a.m to 3 p.m. Um, oh, also early bird, this off a flyer. I am. Early bird <laughs> is at 9 a.m. It's a dollar to get in and three dollars oh, for man. early bird. I oh. will have, I will be selling my, my stuff as well. Um, I have about over 200 new comics I've thrown in my bins. I've actually expanded my comics that I will be selling. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, so I got a lot of in- newer stuff. Um, and I still do mostly everything's a dollar unless it's marked. So look out for that. A lot of cool stuff. Um, and for and, uh, folks to know, I will be going to the show in costume. Yes, you can show up in costume if yeah. you like. I'll be dressing up as Matt Ryan and uh, be Mr. Free Lunch Studios for the day. Nice. Yeah. Well, please come join us October 31st at the American Legion for East of the River Comic Book Collectible Show masks will be required uh, whatever kinetic connecticut laws are going on right now that will be the law of the land so i can't really tell you if that's yes, you know what's going to be things, things can change, change. Uh, yeah. but anyway i'll be wearing hazmat join. suits as we walk around the show who knows yeah but please join us it's gonna be a great time it's the first one back since february 2020 october 31st we'll see you there Hello everyone, welcome to Geekonomics. We're back. It's another week. It's raining. It's gloomy outside. Brian's got a skeleton sitting behind him doing Hamlet. Hamlet in the basement, baby. Hamlet in the basement. Only at the Kazaska household. Yeah, I'm ready for Halloween. I am just pumped for Halloween. I am ready for not anything. So there you go. <laughs> there, we, got, we got guilted into, well, I think, well, whatever. We it feels like we got guilted into putting decorations up because our neighbor, who's in the house like right next to our house, as you I don't know if you've, you've never been here, so you don't know how this, the house looks. But uh, we have each have like bushes in front of our houses, and yeah. over the weekend she decorated her bushes with like lights and Halloweeny things. This is after Claire and I went and got mums and pumpkins to put out, so now it's like a battle now. It's like. A, who's going to decorate better it turns into a thing claire's already uh, ordered lights for the outside they're coming today so are you, are you guys going to be like that that danny devito christmas movie no i'm not getting on the roof and putting lights up that's already been you're going to see uh, your you're going to see the lights from outer space yeah no, no. yeah like i'll do christmas but i don't think decorating for halloween's um I especially, pro- especially if we, we don't get trick-or-treaters oh yeah what's the point so what's the point I, I mean, I put the mums, I put the pumpkin, I put the yeah, yeah, that's just outside, fall, that's fall just decorations. Fall stuff, yeah. I put out, we got these stupid blow up balls, they're eyeballs. You put them in your bushes, so they look like two big eyeballs. And it's really, when they're deflated, they look like, saggy, like yeah. saggy boobs. I was walking around the house, Alice, look at my saggy boobs. Used other things sitting in uh, the bushes. Yeah, so they're there and they don't go in the dark like they're supposed to. So during the daytime, it looks like I have a very angry bush. Yeah. (laughs) But in the nighttime, you can't you can't hardly see the stupid go in the dark eyes. We need to see a doctor about that, bro. I know. I have a very angry bush. Um (laughs) so we get trick-or-treaters, so I, I'm sl- I'm slowly decorating outside. I love it. Yeah. I, I this year I'm more into it than last year. Yeah. Um probably because of you know quarantine and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, 
Halloween's coming. I, I, I just love Halloween. I just love, I just like decorating for fall and Halloween. I don't know. Hmm. Halloween, Thanksgiving are my favorite two holidays. And then Christmas and New Year's are just like, okay, they happen. New hmm. Year, you know, they're not my favorites. But yeah. anywho, Mark. I'm uh, a big Arbor I, Day fan. Arbor Day. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a big, big into Arbor Day. I have actually brought in Boxing Day that Canada has. I we we love Boxing Day because yeah. that's the day you go you go exchange return gift everything. cards and return things. But you also love the the shopping. You love the the pre shopping. I know that was a big thing. I remember you were huge on the Black Friday. We love Black Friday, but now with online, we literally sit on our phones and our computers on Thanksgiving night and do it all online. Yeah. We don't even go out anymore. Like, we yeah. haven't been out on a Black Friday in probably two years, two or three years now. I think it's also since, like, well, I know, like, all my siblings are now older. There's someone like, to buy for. Like, my niece is getting, like, older. She's, like, 11, 12. So you kind of, like, don't, like, it's not like there's no kid to buy stuff for, so it's not right. as fun. Yeah. Um, and I can buy all my own stuff myself. So it's, like, yeah. like no why. Last year, last year, Allison and myself, we decided we we're not buying gifts and we we're just going to donate. Mm. This year, we said, let's do the same thing. I'm still buying for my family. Oh, yeah. My mom and my dad, my brother, we, we still exchange gifts. But for me and Allison, we're just going to donate again. And that's it. Because during the year, I buy what I want. She buys what she wants. Uh, for our birthdays, we definitely get each other things. But yeah. for Christmas, we're like, we don't need more stuff. Let's donate. And yeah. I, I think we're going to do that again this year. I yeah. don't know. It, it just felt better for us. For us, it's a personal yeah. thing. Everybody has their own things. And there's plenty of places to donate, too. So it's not like they're running yeah. out of options. So. Yeah, last year we donated to the Enfield Food Shelf. And we donated to Springfield's uh, um, uh, the Animal Shelter. And yeah. um, I also donated uh, to our personal thing as well. So we, 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 we donated a whole bunch of stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know. And this year, we'll probably do the same. Um, and feel food shelf, you know, it's never too early to get going on the, the turkeys and whatnot. They need a well, lot like of Like I turkeys. always say, and I've said it, I say it to most people. Sorry, I'm thinking I got sneeze coming on. Um, but uh, they need food all year round. Not yeah. just. <laughs> Told you. Man. Not just on the holidays. So. This is very true. Yeah. So donate to not just there. The Enfield uh, loaves and fishes. Enfield Safe Harbor Warming Center, all the different causes. There's tons yeah. of places. Look them up in your area and donate, donate, donate. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, all right, Mark, last year, I mean, last year, <laughs> last week, you went first. I'm going to go first this week. Okay. Real quickly about what I've been up to. How was your week, Brian? My week was this. I finished Sweet Tooth, the TV show, which we're going to talk about spoilers at the end of the show. Um. One thing I didn't mention last week, because I had a lot to talk about last week, as I've watched Spider-Man 3, I finished the trilogy. I was going to ask, yeah, surprised you didn't bring it up last week. I know, I had so much to talk about, I forgot about it. So Spider-Man 3, I watched the uh, editor's cut of the movie, which is a, a sl- it's no longer or shorter than the original, it's just cut slightly different maybe, I don't know. I have no idea. It is not as bad as I remember it. But now that I've had a week to really think about it, digest it, and kind of be like, okay, the problem with three was they really hit upon the same beats two did. Yeah. And you kind of felt like you were watching the same movie, but with just different uh, bad guys. Yeah. And instead of like making Peter and Mary Jane, because it ended on a happy note, then they t- tear him apart yet again, the third one. Yeah. And I kind of feel like it would have benefited if they were together and it was a happy, so they were together. And like in this one, they're slight, they're happy and then it tears apart and then yeah. you have drama. It's like, I don't know. I don't need this again. I, to me, that's the weakest part of this it went movie. Very, and that was the first one that wasn't a Sam Raimi one, right? No, it was Sam, Raimi, Sam Raimi, all three. Yeah. But three... Sam Raimi has gone on record. There's tons of, uh, you can go out there and search this. Yeah. The studio got heavily involved. Yeah. Um, three, Sam Raimi wanted uh, to bring in Vulture. 
They said, yeah. no, we want Venom. Um, they wanted more villains. They wanted more, 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 more. Yeah, they and, wanted the full, like, Sinister Six almost, kind of. like. Yeah, and, and Sam Raimi was just like, uh, okay. And then um, Tobey Maguire, he hurt his back. He almost didn't even do the movie. Yeah. They were actually considering recasting, and they felt like Spider-Man would go on and be like yeah. James Bond. You just have a new actor take over. Yeah, which um, kind of yeah. has, basically. Yeah, but different yeah. stories. But so anyway, this movie, it, it, the fight scenes were fun. I loved yeah. them. I loved the acting was still great. Everything was still great. It just, to me, it felt like I'm watching a rerun. Nothing totally that new. Sandman, also, you could take his character out. You could take his story part out. And it wouldn't make a lick of difference. I don't know. It was know depressing, how- too, because it was a compelling idea for the character. It just wasn't eh, together right. It just felt like a little extra fat. And yeah. yet again, one beat. Okay, in the middle movie, you co- Peter Parker has to come to terms that he, he is the one that sent the robber on to carjack yeah. his uncle and his uncle died. He admits yeah. this to his aunt. That's a big, brutal moment in uh, uh, Spider-Man 2. It's yeah. heart-wrenching. And then Aunt May, he forgives him. And it's a, a big story arc. And then in this movie, they retcon it. And they say that Sandman was the one who accidentally shots, shoots him. So, like, the robber comes running out of the building. He knocks on his shoulder yeah. to tell him to get in the car. He's holding Ben up, and he pulls the trigger by mistake. Yeah, shooting Ben, and then it was now Sandman. He was the, the sidekick to the guy that was yeah. robbing the wrestling so, thing. Peter Parker was like, "Oh my God, it wasn't really me. It was it was Sandman, and I got to get him." And yeah. I was just kind of like, "You put us through all that emotion and two, one of the thing too is they now like, taking it back." Yeah, I don't they know. did that, and then they like they had the whole issue with uh, they tried to do Hobgoblin in that same movie so you had hobgoblin and venom yeah and sandman Sandman. it's like and mary jane yet again mary jane was in trouble 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 uh mary jane yet again was like hung up in this very high thing and they had she had to save her and i was just kind of like they could have done something new yeah um and you know yeah it has its faults it's still a fun movie. It has great moments. I yeah. still enjoy it. Um, well, the, but just I, even the fact that like we got we had Venom at that stage, yeah, was like mind blowing. And <clears throat> albeit yeah. Topher Grace's Venom was not the best choice. You know why though? You know what the big problem with Venom was? He constantly his Venom facade would constantly yeah. go to Topher Grace. Yeah. He, they were like trying to push the Topher Grace in the movie so much because it was in the 70 show and they were like trying to like promote like oh we got this big TV star to be in this movie. Yeah, you know, it took me out of it. Every time he became Venom, you saw Venom's face briefly yeah. and yeah. then he'd have a bunch of dialogue and they would open it up and I'm yeah. like nobody wants that. If yeah. he is Venom, why yeah. is he showing Topher Grace's face? I don't yeah. care. Yeah. It's sort of like um when Sylvester Stallone played uh, Judge Shred, but he constantly took the helmet off. Judge yeah. Shred does not take the helmet off. The helmet is yeah. literally on him 24-7. And the, the remake, they got that right. Yeah. They got Judge Shred right. Sylvester Stallone was like, I'm a big name. You got to see my face. Yeah. Um, well, the movie just studios decide that. They, if, like, it's not just the actors, but... Yeah. Yeah. I know they like, like to be like, oh, well, we want to make sure where people know that it's Topher Grace inside or is yeah. playing Venom. It was lame. That was the lame part. Yeah. But, um, you but know, leading into Venom, yeah, uh, There Will Be Carnage came out this past weekend. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that. Hold on. I got I got one more thing. Okay, fine. I finished. I love the 80s. There's I am a, now. A perfect chance to segue there. You blew it. I know. You blew I, it. I'm in I love the 90s. I'm, I just watched I Love the ni- 94. Oh, my God. Bringing back the memories, man. Mm. I love that series. Anyway. Did you find them all on the uh, YouTubes? Yeah. Yep. I love the 90s. I, I love 2000s. All on YouTube. Someone has a playlist. So I just basically watch them off there. There you go. And I might probably watch I Love the 70s 
Uh, it's my least favorite, but I figure if I go through the 90s and 2000s, well, I'll watch the 70s too. <laughs> okay. Why not? Why Why not? not? Um, all right, Mark, how was your week? You got anything? It was good. Uh, not really anything crazy going on. Again, we went to uh, uh, Saturday. There was a, uh, the ERFC was having a thing on the green, like a fall fair kind of thing. Yeah. And we'd, I'd gotten a CUNY calendar for it and stuff. And so I saw it was going on and we had nothing else going on Saturday. So we went to that and just walked around there. It was kind of nice. as like a nice little craft fair slash like vendor fair kind of thing. So did that for a little bit and then went and, uh, like I said earlier, got our mums and pumpkins from uh, the growth company where we got our corsages for the wedding. So stopped there, then you did that and then. Yesterday I had uh, the last go-kart race of the season for my series. And unfortunately the rains came and we didn't even get the race in because of the rain. So, Oh, geez. Yeah. So that's dunk. But uh, besides that, just a regular week, nothing really crazy. Just watching the shows. I've been watching nothing. Uh, didn't watch any new movies or anything. Um, I am go- this week. I'm going to start. Why the last man I'm in oh, volume boy. two. I'm in middle of volume two. I looked at the episode list yeah. on Hulu, and it looks like I will be safe. It looks like yeah. basically they cover the first volume, so I yeah. will be fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm so excited to start that show. The c- graphic novel is amazing. Yeah. Freaking amazing. Yeah, like, they do, the one good oh, thing is God. they kind of take a lot of the uh, way out there. I mean, besides the, the fact that there's a virus that kills every man in the world. Uh, but like the way out, like I know in the graphic novel it gets kind of out there after a while like later in the graphic novel there's things that are like okay that's just cuckoo cabana yeah but they all so, do that they all do that yeah but so I, mean, I think like with this it's more like a realistic like story of how like things would happen well i i like, hope uh by next week i'll i'll be into the show and we can talk more at length about it so i'm very yeah. excited and definitely anybody who's watching the show get your hands on those graphic novels because they're absolutely oh, yeah, for sure they're way different too it's not well i mean it's pretty close but not it's pretty super, close from yeah. what i from what i could see and yeah, i gather but close, i don't know but it's not like like sweet tooth it's pretty close but it's not like I oh sweet tooth is very different yeah i got things to say about sweet tooth i got things um so let's jump into uh the news okay that's where I wanted to go first with this. So speaking of Venom. Okay, speaking of Venom, uh, the box office, the <laughs> box office for you. Uh, Venom sequel made 90 million this past weekend, wow. setting the pandemic record. Um, it did a 90.1 million. Um, it beat out Black Widow. I've heard uh, it's it's um the, the Venom movie. I've heard it's very uh the the post credit sequence, which we'll talk about shortly, basically overshadows the whole film itself. Like, we basically just go to watch the post credit scene. Like I the, mean, like the movie itself is like a filler. It's just the there. I've heard mixed reviews. I do want to see it, but for me, it's an at-home movie. Yeah. Um, I've heard, and listen, I don't like to regurgitate what other people's opinions are because I want to make my own opinion. So I've only watched a few reviewers that i i generally watch about everything yeah Um, one reviewer basically said it felt like a a better version of the first movie but uh it it still had that hokey kind of b movie to it quality Mm. um and one person said it was uh better than the first movie but i haven't i don't know spoilers i I heard it like that really definitely people can tell the difference between the PG-13 version of Venom than the first one, which was an R. No, they were both PG-13. Oh, see, I heard like it was their first one was an R. No, both, both movies were PG-13. Yeah. They were not R. People complained. PG-13 that they... version, the first one was way more violent than this one was. What I understand. People, people complained that it should have been an R rocky and in my opinion is i don't think it needs to be an r it could a good movie 
doesn't matter the rating. It's a good movie. I don't care if it's G, PG-13, or R. If it's good, it's good. And they can make it work no matter what. But they've all been PG-13. I think the thing with the first one was it just seemed like it was like more violent than this one. But for but Venom... They also have Carnage in this one. Yeah. But which I think Venom, people are like, we know Carnage as much as we know Venom. And I even, like, just from the trailer itself, seeing, like, again, like you were saying, the whole Topher Grace thing with the, the face having to be shown a lot, it seemed like in the trailer that was my concern. I haven't seen the movie yet, so that's another thing. If people... That's why I don't have all the information. But from the trailer I've seen, it seemed like they were falling into that same trope that the Topher Grace Venom was falling into, where every time Woody Harrelson would talk, the face would peel back and you see Woody Harrelson's face. I don't know. I don't know until I see it. Um, but I don't know. we'll see. I, I say this PG 13 for Venom, in my opinion, works because when we were teenagers, Venom really appealed towards teenagers. I'm sorry yeah. to say that for everybody out there. When Venom came out, teenagers flocked to that. So yeah. I ha- so you have to keep it at PG 13 because you want a younger audience. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. If it was rated R, I don't think it would have done as well. Yeah. Um, and maybe Another thing is I've, uh, I've seen is a lot of uh, reviews that I've seen online. It's you could definitely tell it's not a Marvel made movie. It's a, in association with Marvel movie. I don't think it matters. It's a, it's still well, a just like the, the, it's the, a Sony. Style, the style and the quality. I guess is what people are saying. Like the oh yeah. The quality of it isn't as up to par as like a Marvel, an actual Marvel movie would be. Yeah. But. So real quickly, uh, Black Widow opened at 80 million, but but here's the big asterisk on that one. It made an additional 60 million on Disney Plus. Yeah. So it really made 140 million. But not in the theater. Uh, the theater. Um and then Shang Chi did seventy five million. Fast and Furious uh, F nine did seventy million. So Venom two doing ninety million. I mean that is pretty awesome. Well, it's also a sequel, so it's Venom, and people definitely like Venom more than like Shang Chi in general. Well, Shang Chi stayed as a character for four weeks, yeah, which is something character, that hasn't right? happened. Just, long. Yeah, so yeah. I think I, the I thing mean, with Shang Chi is people like the first week people saw it. And then the word of mouth about it made it stay around longer because people oh, are like, yeah. oh, if this is good, I'll go check it out. Yeah. Whereas Venom, everyone's like, we all love Venom. He's a very popular character. We're going to go see his movie first weekend. Um. So, yeah, definitely. That's there's the there's something to that. I agree. Yeah. Um. And a movie I did see on HBO Max, which I'm a huge fan of. We saw Many Saints of New- uh, Newark, uh, The Sopranos movie fantastic mm-hmm. if you're a sopranos fan you'll absolutely love it me and allison watched it uh friday night i was so freaking excited we both <laughs> loved it we've been talking about it all weekend the mm. the actors that portrayed younger versions of these characters you know in the show nailed it yeah um the story is perfect um it is does it, just... does it suffer at all from the prequel trope of you know everyone's going to survive. So you don't worry no. about anything happening to any of them. It's a whole new story with a new, with a, I know what I'm saying, but the characters that are in the original Sopranos show that are yeah. in the movie, you know, no. aren't nothing bad's going to happen to them. So. It, it's giving you context to the stories they have said in that show. Gotcha. It's expanding the mythology. Uh, Dickie is a character they've talked about, but you know, his uncle Dickie, you don't know, yeah. which was Tony Sopranos. He looked up to him um, is that Ray Liotta's character? Uh, no, but that's his father. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so basically, you follow. You're following multiple storylines, but he's kind of like the main storyline. Who um, plays his other uncle that is in the original series? Uncle June. Yeah. He's in this a younger version. He nailed it, man. Ooh, yeah. I don't. I forget the actor's name. Um, but is 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 Big Pussy in this as a younger version? Yeah, just briefly. I mean, he's okay. just out in the background. I mean, you you see Paulie, you see all these guys, you see young Anthony, baby Anthony. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, Tony Soprano. I mean, 
his real life son um, is yeah. playing, portraying him. He, I mean, you're just seeing how he's living this life and all this shit's happening around him. Um, but if you're a Sopranos fan, highly recommend it. It's on, yeah, it's on my list of things to check out. Nice time having a chance to do it yet. Yeah, it's great, great movie. Uh, acting was phenomenal. Um, like I said, they nailed it. Yeah. Um, I did watch more Visions. Oh, I, I haven't watched. I'm finding I it hard to get through them all as I get farther into it. Yeah, I just anime is not my thing. So, oh yeah, if you're not an anime person, then you're not. Yeah, I mean, I I uh, respect the the artistry of it and the art form, but I just not. It's just not my yeah. thing. Like especially like the cutesy ones, it's like not my. I can't. It's very tough for me to. Deal I hear with. you. I hear you. But. Um, so let's talk about let's jump into that mid credit scene, Mark. Mm-hmm. I, I watched it. So let's do a quick setup. So everybody out there, if you haven't seen it, spoilers. If you had seen it, we're spoilers. gonna talk about it. Spoiler alert. It's it might be on YouTube. You might be able to still check it out. Basically, Tom Hardy, uh Brock. Is it Brock? Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock, Eddie Brock is in a hotel room talking to his symbiote venom yes. and venom says says to him basically i want to show you what it's like to be a symbiote for all these years or whatever well, because he was you... like it was like eddie and him were like arguing about how smart yeah. each other is and he's right like, well i'm so smart i've been in i have connection to the symbiote hive mind right that's it over yeah. years and years of eight thousand years of knowledge he's like I oh if you're so smart you. then why don't you show me how smart you are kind of thing you know yeah yeah and then so he's like, okay, Eddie, I'll show you a tiny bit that because I don't want to blow your mind and melt your brain. And then so when he goes to do that, uh, the like a wave of power goes through the, the room, very similar to the wave of power that we see in the trailer for Spider Man No Way Home. Right. It's very reminiscent of very the same kind of effect. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of sort of think, well, you know what's going on. You could be wrong. We don't know what's actually going on. I think it's the at the stuff. time. At the time, we don't know what's going on. But then they're in a different room, a different location, and the TV turns on. The TV's already on. Yeah, and the TV's on. And it's, a, and it's like, the Daily Bugle with J. Jonah Jameson yeah. talking about Spider-Man. Being a menace. Yeah. And so, then he licks the screen. He looks sexy. Screen. It was yeah. very hot when he did that. <laughs> I was turned on. So they're saying Venom is now in the MCU. Yes. And so after he licks the screen, it turns and there's a guy brushing his teeth going, how the hell did you get my room? Who are you? And, they, and then it's uh, Eddie, back, Brock again. Eddie Brock. And he's like, oh, I don't know. Who are you? And like it ends. Yeah. And um. So I believe. I mean, it starts the very beginning of it starts on like a Spanish the novella. Yes. So you don't really know what's going on because I saw like, like three clips of the beginning and I'm like, and you're like, I'm watching the wrong thing and I get duped. Yeah. But then it zooms out and he's like, "This is my favorite show." Because they're talking about the Spanish novella that's on the TV. Well, Mark. So here's here's the question. So I think the spell that. Doc, uh, I'm Doc Hawk, uh, that um, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange does changes and brings in the Venom. that the, the Venom the, into the MCU world because well, Sony think, said they're bringing they're going to have Spider Man into those movies. They're basically going to split Spider Man that he will go into those movies and you'll be part of the MCU. Yeah. So my thought on that is is that uh, the a villain from each one of the original Spider-Man movies is being brought into the MCU. Like Doc, like uh, Green Goblin from the first movie and second, Doc Ock from the second movie and Venom from the third movie. And I think that instead of bringing in Topher Grace as Venom, they just decide we already have Venom, we'll just bring our Venom in. Yeah, Tom Holland's Venom. Yeah, or Tom Hardy's Venom. Tom Hardy, sorry. What did I say? Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Yes. What? Because there was a photo that he had posted on Instagram with him wearing, him wearing a, a hat. So. A No Way Home hat, and then he deleted it. Yeah. 
So and that's a the staff enemy hat. Could be in No Way Home. He could have an appearance that yeah. all these villains are going to come in. And I think you're right, Mark. It makes way more sense. We have our Venom. Yeah. A better ve- Venom, I, yeah. I would argue. Yeah. Um, so this is pretty cool. I mean, yeah. for me, that would be the only reason I would have saw that movie opening weekend, but I watched it on YouTube for free. So, yeah. So the other question is that I have is um, you already have, like we've seen, we've talked, just talked about Green Goblin, right. Doc Ock, Venom. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to get some kind of Michael Keaton in this movie. So you got Vulture. Uh, we also well, well we could Jamie Foxx is in this movie, so that's Electro. Well, that's, so that's five. It's only missing one more to make your Sinister Six. I mean, they have never said Sinister Six. I think everybody is just assumed, so it might not be. I Sinister mean, with all the the clues we've gotten now, like the pieces that we've all seen as fans, I agree. Kind of lead you towards the Sinister Six is happening in this movie. People, Not as a Sinister Six, but there's a possibility of being six villains in this movie. People have said that they saw the lizard. Oh, what's his name? Uh, from uh, The Amazing Spider-Man in the background in one of the scenes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The so that, yeah, so that would be six. Yeah. If that's, six, if six. that's true. I mean, if lizard that's King. real. Yeah. Lizard King, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to bring in a villain from the Amazing Spider-Man. Because only two, you don't have... Well, they got Electro. As that's well. true. That's true. Yeah. So that would make sense. They're going to bring in all the villains that Spider-Man has fought. Yeah. Just from different universes. I am so excited for Spider-Man. I, I don't... I am, but the thing I, is with oh. that, saying that um, Venom, in his world, has been a hero so to speak. Yeah. Are they still going to go with that? Thing? He's a, then, I, is he going to start as a hero and then he's going to get aggravated with Spider-Man and then go after Spider-Man? The way, Vita, okay, the way Venom licked that screen, he seems kind of like... I think he's like obsessed ag- with Spider-Man. A- like. Agitated that he's there. Who is See, I got it the other way. I think it was more of just like a, a like a fanboy kind of thing. Like, oh... This guy's got powers. I want to meet him. Like, I feel like they've built up the Venom symbiote in a way that he envies these superhero type. Like, he would be a character that would envy the superheroes. We could get the want Black to be a superhero. Black Spider Man. We could get, and that's Spider-Man. what I'm thinking. That's what he's gonna think about doing. Is like he'll put the the logo for Spider Man on his chest to kind of like mimic. Spider-Man and be like, I'm a, such a fan of yours, but then Spider-Man's not going to understand because he's fighting all these other guys. No, no, this is what would happen. Basically, Venom would go and parasite onto Peter Parker, and Tom, and that would piss off um, uh, Tom Hart, uh, Tom Hardy. Yes, you're Brock, right. Brock, it would piss off Eddie, Eddie Brock, Brock, and that was where they butt heads. Yeah, I don't know because he could be like, "That's me. Venom's me. Why? You yeah, know? Why are you and leaving then- me to go to that guy?" Yeah, why am I that, not good enough? That could that could be a good. Because also the thing of is, are they going to go the full like Daily Bugle story where Eddie Brock goes and works at the Daily Bugle? Like that's like when they go into this movie, time has passed and Eddie Brock is working for the Daily Bugle because he worked for the Daily Bugle in his universe and got fired from there. Right. And in this universe is Eddie Brock, like did he get pulled into the universe to take the place of? spider-man universes eddie brock like you know what i'm saying like yeah in the universes you know, in the multiverse as we've seen with what if and all the other things of multiverse there's there's you but there's multiple different versions of you like with loki there's always loki but there's different versions of loki and different right things of loki so i'm saying in the spider-man universe with this whole thing that dr strange is doing with the spell He's not bringing in, per se, these villains, these characters from other universes are the people that live in, or the people in this universe. So as in like quantum leaping kind of, like uh, Doc Ock is being quantum leaped into 
his character. Green Goblin is being brought in to replace the human uh, version in this. Universe. I don't know. I think you're overthinking that. I think there's just well, no, because I'm saying if you go to Loki, in. I'm saying multiverse knowledge that we have from Loki yeah. and what if. There's always a Brian Kazaska. But, yeah, but they're not quantum leaping. They're oh, actually no, but I'm physically saying, but there. Just, I'm using it as an example for people to understand the best or for me to understand the best. Like, there's a Brian Kazaska in this universe yeah. that we're in right now. But, like, the spell that Doctor Strange does in the trailer grabs a, a Brian Kazaska from this universe. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he takes over your spot in this universe. I think we've physically that seen trailer, them all. They, they, well, through that all together. Credits thing, that's what they're kind of saying is that not that Eddie Brock was in that room, but the Eddie Brock from his universe and the Venom universe is being brought into the Spider Man universe or the Marvel yeah. universe. Right, right, right. So, does that, I mean, I'm assuming that would mean there is a Eddie Brock in the Marvel universe already. That there hasn't been. We haven't seen one. So that doesn't mean he's not in the universe, though. But technically, if we have, have not seen him yet, he probably doesn't exist. This is how they're bringing him in. That's how I see it. I, see, I, I think don't, it's the other way around. I think I, you're. I think you're not diving deep enough into the thought process. I am. Like Loki, but I kinda, that was the Loki thing. Like he yeah. went back after yeah. the end of, at the end of the episode at the end of the Loki season. This in the world, though, I'm saying. Eddie Brock has not been introduced at all in any of these Spider-Man movies. Neither has so, Doc Ock or Electro or because any they're other being characters. they're being they're being sucked into a multiverse. Also, we don't even know where that takes place. We don't know if Peter Parker is being thrown into another world, right? I mean, that could be happening. See, I in think a it's totally the other way around. World. I think we're thinking that he's going to be moving to other universes and taking the places of like the Tobey Maguire's and the he could uh, Andrew Garfield's. Whereas it's I possible. think he's still staying in the universe that he's in and all these villains are being brought into the Marvel universe. I I say both things could happen. And I, I don't rule oh, yeah, I see it too, but I think mine's right and yours is wrong. Uh, I think <laughs> you're being closed minded because I feel like it could go we just I think it's an easier if. we just saw what if when he was literally in well, the yeah. hallway and all the world and they're going yes. into different worlds yeah and we saw in the trailer I think, I think it's just easier story-wise to and just not having to deal with all the rigmarole of what it would involve i think that like trailer, a mcguire and andrew garfield that trailer possibly. Is 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 a misdirect, my friend. Oh, it's a whole I, red herring. It's a coise. It's a Marvel. I feel trailer. like I there's going to be. I think he will be jumping in between different worlds. I I or worlds we brought into him. I don't know. That's what I think. I could go either way. I I don't I don't think one is a better or worse idea. I think it all works. Yeah. You know. I I I'm just kind of going off the whole Loki. From watching Loki, and how the yeah, but first. But Loki, but Loki took place in a dead zone where basically they were killing off all the versions of Loki and putting them in this area. Oh, I and, agree with that. But I'm saying so I think that, just going off of how the story of Loki was told with how the multiverse works, I'm leaning towards that the villains are being brought into the universe and not Tom Holland's characters being shot into different universes. I don't know because they have that cool shot with Doctor Strange knocks he splits Peter Parker off of Spider Man. That's from yeah they did that with Hulk and Endgame. So I don't know. And Anything his, is like, possible soul out of his husk basically. And I yeah I I think yeah. everything we we're gonna be so wrong on everything. You know how well, it probably, is. but it's fun to come up with your own concepts and ideas. Uh, my con yeah I I see it either or I yeah. I really feel like Peter Parker could be thrown into different places because of the spell um so i don't know and if there's a split where peter parker and spider-man coexist with each other separately maybe peter parker is the one who's going to be thrown around into multiverses well, where the thing too is, just, right where now, is. just as i'm talking as you're talking thinking about it the whole shtick of the trailer for no way home was 
Peter Parker was trying to get everyone to forget that he's Spider Man. Yeah, I just want everybody. And to that's know when the Spider-Man. spell happens. But in that post credit scene, Venom arrives after the spell ish happens or whatever happens to bring him into the universe, and they're Daily Bugles saying that Peter Parker is Spider Man. Yeah, that's where it's interesting, right? It's a it, it, it contradicts our theories. Yeah. So at first I was like, is that's not the snap? The snap happened before prior to that, so it couldn't be that. Yeah, but it no. matches up with the spell. But if the spell happened, maybe in that universe, people still know. Or could it, it be something that uh, Scarlet Witch did? Because she's supposed to be in the multiverse of madness as well. The Doctor Strange movie. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we won't know because I until until Spider Man hits, right? I mean, it seems like it'd be too. I mean, it's weird to say, but it almost seems like it's too early in him coming into the MCU for him to go against Spider Man. Oh, it's gonna be build up. Yeah, it's gonna be build up, and him I just throw it into the No Way Home movie. I mean, I'd rather have like more of a like they're always around each other but not totally against each other until like the next Venom movie or something like that where they have their own movie right, to do right. all and not have Venom just be a side character in another movie. I predict Spider uh, Venom could make a cameo in No Way Home somehow. Oh, like an way. end trailer, like an end credit scene or something like that. But I bet you Venom 3 I bet you Venom yeah. 3 is going to be with, with Spider-Man. Yeah. Because, I mean, what else? What else could they do at this point? I mean, yeah. just have them fight more symbionts, it's going to get boring. No, no, no. It's gonna, but I if, think that's going to be more of like the Spider-Man 3 uh, story, kind of. Like where the symbiote goes down to uh, Peter Parker. Or Peter Parker steals a symbiote from yeah. Eddie Brock. Because like in the 3, if I remember correctly, it was because Spider-Man didn't think he was powerful enough to protect people so he needed a bigger like he felt like he needed something to well basically in spider-man 3 when the, the um comet hits earth it latches onto the back of his uh little scooter it goes home with him it was yeah. hiding in his apartment and when when uh, peter parker finds out the truth and that mm. no one's looking for the um sandman because yeah. he's he gets his rage he gets yeah. more emotional, and there was a rift between him and MJ, and and then uh, they he he butted he's butting heads with um, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, they okay. already had a a, a battle. Um, uh, yeah. James Franco, yeah. James Franco. So so basically, he comes home and he's just full of rage, and the symbiote feeds feeds on that, and it latched onto his suit. And then he basically it allowed him to just be an asshole and yeah. not have any like he started the doing the finger in the Marvel universe ever. He started doing the finger yeah, thing. Get the worst He's like, sequence yeah, in yeah. Uh, movie history. You know, it's really funny. I watch it now. It didn't bother me as much. It's funny. And yeah. hitting on it girls. was bad at the time that we were like, oh my yeah. gosh, this yeah. is terrible. What is going on right now? He 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 hit, hits on Gwen Stacy. He yeah. goes after. He basically like. He goes on a date with her to make MJ jealous. He yeah. goes to the place that MJ works yeah. and does this whole dance routine with uh, Gwen Stacy to make MJ jealous yeah. and then yeah. pushes her, like physically yeah. altercation yeah. pushes her. Uh, and then, yeah, the black symbiote basically feeds on him just being an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. But I think with this, Venom 3 would be Venom's like, like you said, he's got the power. I could really feed off of this. Yeah. I and and then you get the black suit on Spider-Man. To hum, hum, uh, Eddie Brock is pissed off that he lost his symbiote to Spider-Man. Of course, that would be yeah. off because that was his power that made him special. So then that could potentially give the conflict. Yeah, you know, if they go down that route. Yeah, yeah. But man, I am excited. It was a great mid-credit scene. Um, I, I, I it was people... Bryce Dallas Howard as Gwen Stacy. Yes, one. yes, she was still as hot as ever. Yeah. Uh, so, Doctor Kurt Connors, that's who you were thinking of. Yeah, as Lizard uh, King. Lizard King. Yeah. 
Um, I heard people, I was reading stuff on Reddit and how people went batshit during that mid when Spider-Man showed up. I That's the part I miss of being in the theater yeah. with a crowd. Moments like that. Yeah. I miss those moments. I mean, it's, um, I think it's a... It's, yeah. it's a I really think that that's like the, the consensus of everybody is that the, the end mid credit thing basically took over the whole movie. Like no one's going to remember Venom 2. All you're going to be like, oh, you remember that? That was a movie that we first got Venom and Spider-Man on the same screen together. Yeah. Even yeah, though he yeah. was on a TV screen, we still got the two characters. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so. I mean, those symbiote fights after a while, my brain just turns off. It just well, I also heard like the whole movie takes place like over like the main part of the movie takes over like a course of like a day. So well, I'm not, not, I, like, I, I'm not gonna heard very much like it's a filler movie. It's I'm very, not gonna take other people's opinions. So I, see no, I know I'm just like, I just that's the thing. Yeah. The, I don't want to know against it. So yeah, I've heard Please it's good. Say. It's just a very much in the vein of Black Widow and the Doctor Strange movie. They're just they're fine. Yeah, they're good. Good movie um real quickly we we did we talked about this briefly episode eight of what if yes uh, this is what we we got the uh age of ultron but with the real uh with a vision behind yes. it. yes if uh ultron succeeded in putting his uh consciousness inside the vision body that was a good ep- dude that was a great episode yeah it was trippy oh my god and then the, the fight they had was awesome and they go between different worlds like we were yeah. saying and at the very end um uh this the watcher it looks at and gets strange. Doctor strange from the weird universe and he's just like i need i need your help so like i was right before the uh, show i was telling brian that uh there's been this honda commercial that's been airing pretty much since the beginning of uh, the Mar the, the Disney Plus Marvel season, okay, of Loki and uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. So uh, this commercial starts with uh, Loki pulling the Tesseract as Tom as a uh, Tom Hiddleston. He steals a car from a guy. Uh, then it cuts to uh, uh, Captain America. Who is Falcon, uh, def- defending a lady in a Honda from somebody? Yeah, with a sh- with his shield and all that. Then it cuts to the scene from What If, and it's all the What If characters: Peggy Carter, Doctor Strange, like all the ones we've seen, uh, Spider Man from the zombie universe, all like back to back to back, and they're surrounded by. The Ultron drones. And then this portal happens and Thor drops in driving a Honda and just does like a huge drift around and destroys all these Ultron drones. So you're telling me what if is going to end with a Honda commercial? No, I'm saying I think this commercial has been airing for months now. It's not, that's not going to be the ending. No, no, no. I'm not saying it's going to be the ending, but it's basically gave away the fact that there's going to be like this Avengers team up. Oh, yes. Because they hinted at in this episode at yes. the end. Yes. With him going, I, I need your help, which I think is going to involve the Watcher going and grabbing the heroes from each of the episodes we've already seen already this season. I agree. I agree. To build his like, what if Avengers Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. go attack Ultron. So to me, I was like, oh my gosh. I didn't even think to think about it. I'm just like, oh, they're just promoting what if. Because they need to promote the characters and they have to have them doing something. But the, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a scene in this episode yeah. that's coming out okay. where all of the heroes are surrounded okay. by Ultron drones. Let's remember this for, ne- and for next Or drops out of the sky, not in a Honda, but just out of a portal. <laughs> wouldn't it be great if it was a Honda, though? If he drops in a Honda, that's even going to make it better. But oh, my God. If because if it's full car like full animation, they did it with the, the Honda and uh-huh. pulling around drifting and destroying all these drones as he's twirling the hammer. Furious. Yeah, as drifting. he's twirling the hammer too. So it's even yeah. better. Oh god. 
But I wouldn't be surprised if there's a scene where he falls out of the sky, twirling the hammer and like cleans up like a bunch right, of right, right, right. drones and then drops into the middle of the, the new Avengers. And then they do like the Avengers pose where they're all like doing the superhero mm-hmm. poses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think I you're like, right. Like, are think... you serious? I've been watching this commercial for months now. Well, let's never wait. even caught a, like thought about maybe they're like I was like oh that's cool they're promoting because it's all them promoting like don't forget to watch all these shows on Disney Plus at the end of the trailer and you know Honda yeah yeah I was like so they've I've been watching this commercial and seeing this scene that probably is a whole scene from like the last episode of the season of What If and I didn't even catch it well put a pin in that remember that write that down and uh next week on monday we will basically say if that scene happens or not i yeah. i'm interested now uh i know the if fact this... that they go out and recruit all the different heroes i think, I think that's going to happen i yeah. think they're going to have an avengers moment at the end yeah but yeah, it's, it's great. great though because like i said i think i said it last week i can't remember if i, if I didn't i'll take credit for it that all these episodes which we thought were just one-off drop-ins are all basically leading to what we saw in the last episode. Yeah. So it's then going to connect all these episodes together because we all that thought like, okay, the zombies episode, we'll see the conclusion of that next season. The Peggy Carter episode, we'd see more of that next season. Right, right. Whereas now it's just, these are all leading to one story arc Yeah. of Ultron like taking over the universes yeah totally yeah i mean i think a little bit of both to seven different stories i think it's a little bit of both i think i think we're gonna get these characters come in like you say avengers but i also believe in season two we will have continuing of uh carter we will have a continuing of certain storylines but they can be brought in to have the avengers moment because they have to defeat yeah because you even had uh, the black panther Star Lord combo. Yeah, that's the only version that didn't die that we saw because Black Panther yeah. was dying left and right. He dies all the time. That poor his guy. arms getting chopped off, his legs getting hacked off and fed to zombies or zombie whatever. Scarlet Witch. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, a poor guy, but yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think we're gonna have a little bit of both. I think we're gonna have a big battle, and then I think some of these storylines. Like Peter Quill, he meets his dad at the end of one episode. I think we're going to see that. Yeah, the end of the that. Black Panther episode. Yeah, I'm, we might see that Yeah. in season two. Yeah. So I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's, yeah. I think it's uh, well done. I mean, some of those uh, versions of characters, it's like, if they're being brought into this what-if world, I wouldn't want to go back afterwards to my universe. Like Doctor Strange's one's like trapped in that little glass bubble out in the middle of nowhere. Peter Parker's basically in a world where everything's eaten. Right. I'm not going to be like, yeah, let me rush back to that. <laughs> right. You sure I can't camp out here for a while somewhere? You can't probably in a shed somewhere for a while? Right, right. Totally. Like, I'm not going to rush back to those universes and be eaten by zombies. Um, all right, Mark. Let's move on to the main topic at hand because we're going to wrap up the show soon. But this is the last thing. Um now, Sweet, Sweet Tooth. Tooth, you finally watched the show in the same year that it came out. Yeah. So I every week I bought a new graphic novel. I read them all. I read The Return. I loved them. Amazing. I recommend it. Go read them. Um, I started the show last week. I finished the show throughout the week. I would watch like one or two here or there. Mm. Um, we're going to do spoilers here, people. Yes. Um, it's a deep dive in the Sweet Tooth. For, for, for me... Um, I, I love the first three episodes. I didn't care for episode four and five. I thought okay. they were filler. Fill. I remember what each episode had in it because I watched them separately. I do. Uh, four and five. We we the end of three. We meet the teenagers with Bear. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She joins. They have the whole episode where they're caught by them, and yeah. they have the tiger. Then the next episode, they have to go through the field. He runs on the, the bridge. Yeah, lavender or whatever. They fall into the field. It does nothing to them. And then they um, they go on the train. They make it yes. to the train. Yes. Then 
We got uh, so that's four or five, and then six and Those seven are episodes. They're not terrible. I didn't, I didn't like them. Um, well, they're the just last... like story progressing episodes. They're not like I, I don't know, like I... major things that happen in every single episode. I felt differently. So the last two episodes were great, but overall, I hope the show, in my opinion, gets better. Um, I, I didn't care about the teenagers at all. I didn't care well, about I think they're just a speed bump. They're not like they're just a, like a little. I didn't like. They're just an obstacle for them. I also show. I hope the writing gets a little bit better. Some of the things were just a little too convenient. Um, how the teenagers they don't have internet, but the teenagers got the address to um, uh, Birdie, and I was like, well, how did they do that? They don't have. They don't have internet. They don't have anything to get the address like that so quickly. Well, it makes no sense. They don't have internet. They say it. They don't have internet. Well, they have an interconnecting web of information. That's the internet. internet. They don't have like access to. They don't have internet like, records and things. And, um, I just didn't like the whole teenager supply. I'm gl- so glad they were gone. Bear, come to find out, she's really Becky at the end. Now, why, why is that like, oh, my God, that's an oh, my God moment for the people who read the comics. Becky was a character who was much older um, in the graphic novels, and she was rescued from a, um, a prostitution ring. Mm. Um, well, they probably she, decided not to do that in this show. So. Now, I get it. The graphic novel is very dark. Yeah. It's very uh, adult. Pretty. This yeah. is very geared towards a whole family affair and i don't fault it for it i think it it works that way i i don't fault it at all i think i think i wouldn't say it's totally geared towards like a family i mean it's geared more towards a younger group than yeah if i had a 13 it makes it more generalized than it does like if i had a 13 14 year old i would watch this show with that yeah with that kid because i think it works well for the adults and it works yeah, for a yeah. teenager as well. Uh, Gus is very, very annoying sometimes. He just does what well, he he's just that age group. That's what they are. But he's full of hope, and the whole message of yeah. the show is hope. Where yeah. in the graphic novel, Gus is the sign of hope, but he does have to kill, yeah. which is not going to happen in the show. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, there, there are, like, the other plot point that i was just kind of like oh god please on the train gus loses the dog so he's like he has great smell he could smell medicine locked up in a train well because he's got the yards away but the dog smells like his dad he loses it and he's like i gotta find the dog so anyway they're, they get trapped in the last cart by the bad guys. Yeah. And come to find out when Jeffers opens the door, the dog's on the ground. I'm like, are you kidding me? He disappeared for freaking ever. He couldn't find that goddamn dog. And then it's right there. Yeah. I was just kind of like, there are just moments like this is just to me aggravating because it's a difference between really good and just kind of lazy writing. And it was just kind of like, that yeah. was a stupid moment because if it was right there, he would have found it. And he has great smell. They bring it up constantly about his smell and he couldn't find that. <sighs> um, they brought in Jeffers' uh, buddy who recognizes him on the train. Um, yeah. In the graphic novel, that, char- that character is brought in near the end. Um, so I was kind of like, ah, it's kind of a weird moment to bring him in. Um, I, you know, I don't know. Well, they wanted I don't to, know. like, I think it was also too. You, I think with the the show, you kind of want to still you want to bring in characters that people remember from the graphic novel if they're fans of the graphic novel. But I kind of feel like his character could have come in at a different time. What does um, mean he his... can't come back in? It's like they say in the like the. I mean, the show kind of like hint at the fact that he dies. Yes, he's dead. For his, he's, for, but there's one against whatever. But um, there's not saying that he could have just got beat down and they still kept him alive. And he's maybe going to come back later on. Um, the show, weirdly enough, the show weirdly enough ends in the first volume, but they brought in some elements that kind of 
um, from the show different points. But when the first graphic novel ends is when Gus is captured and put into a cage and he sees everybody, all yeah. the animals like him, the hybrids. And yeah. the show is the same way. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. I liked when they gave us Jeffers' backstory. That was phenomenal acting by the actor. It was a great scene. Um, I was kind of hoping his his kid would have been Wendy. It would have made more sense, but they made Wendy Bear's sister, um, Becky's sister, but they made a goat baby, which you briefly see a goat kid. So I'm thinking that's got to be his son. Um, in the graphic novel, his son is Bobby. Um, no, is it Bobby? I believe it is Bobby. Um, well, now you got me confused there with your you went what? Really quick in that thought process. What do you mean? I I just I was just abbreviating what, what the show did. I, I had no. But the, from the graphic novel to the show, Wendy is Wendy in the show. Wendy is Becky's sister. We we find out at the end. Oh, okay, Bear's sister. Fair sister. Yes. Um, in I when that is found by the lady at the zoo. Yes. Okay. I thought okay. they were gonna make Wendy uh the big man's kid. Oh, okay. they, they, I thought that's what they were gonna do, but they made it some random goat baby. And yeah. I I think we see the goat baby yeah, when they're in the, the course. They have like they have like the flashback to when he has the kid and then the whole thing. Right. Like the the crumble happens as he's going out to get his wife something. Right. Um, so for me, I hope the show is, it has potential. I'm still going to watch season two. I did enjoy it. Um, I don't like, I just didn't care for those two filler episodes. For me, they felt filler because nothing important happened. Well, that's every episode has, every series has that now. It's like I, they, I don't, yeah, I know, but I'm just saying not, no, it does not. All shows have those filler episodes to well, me. Even Mandalorian has like two or, had two or three episodes. It's like, okay, this, this is just getting us through to the next thing. But they were still, I'm only, I'm only, I'm only comparing Sweet Tooth from what I saw. Yeah. They were my least two favorite episodes. So, is this, so this goes to my theory, or not my theory, but one of my theories of, um, do you think it's better to have read the graphic novel before you watch the show? Or do you, would you have preferred to have watched the show and then gone and read the graphic novel to then be able to, like, for how me, do you prefer to think you'd rather, like, for me, with movies too, would you rather read the book first, then watch the movie, or would you rather watch the movie? And then go read the source material. Okay, for me, I okay, great question. This is how I take it. For graphic novels, I have a lot that I would buy and I never got a chance to read them. When a show comes out, I'm like, oh my God, I got to read it now. I think, so it motivates me to read them. I like reading them before watching the show. I don't think it changes my view. I, I watched Sweet Tooth, the first half an hour of Sweet Tooth, I really wasn't into it. And then I trudged through that first episode and I was into it. I, I kind of let go of the graphic novel. I, I, I took I'm in. Saying, that's what I'm saying. Is you, you're coming in already with your expectations at a certain level of yes. what you expect the show to be at. Yes. So you're coming in with that I mean, like prejudice of the show of if it doesn't hit these marks, then I'm not going to be into it. Where but, do you think if you next show that's coming out well, that why the next man? I, I, I'm going to go into that. So. Yeah, well, you've read that graphic novel already. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the midst of reading. So I'm saying yeah. if the next show that's going to be coming out that's based off a graphic novel... I'll read it first. Yeah. I was going to say, what if you tried... What if we did an experiment with you? And instead of reading the graphic novel first, you watched the show first. I did, The Boys. Then read the graphic novel. The Boys, I watched the show first, and then I read them all uh, this past summer. Oh, yeah. last summer after season two, I read them all. Um, for me, it, when I watched, I love the boys uh, season one and two, and I read the graphic novel, and I thought the graphic novel uh, is even better. Um, yeah. But I also like the changes they made in the show. So, but I'm saying, do you think you like the show better, not knowing this any kind of background story, as opposed to knowing background story before you watch the show? Right, you're. I, I get what you're saying. I, I mean, for me, the boys, I think, is great. Both 
graphic novel and show. Yeah. Um, when it comes to Sweet Tooth, I think, I think because the graphic novel is so very dark and and a, a very dark and adult oriented direction, mm. I was thrown off about how sweet and hopeful and how colorful yeah. and how everything this is very opposite of the graphic yeah. novel. I think when I watch Why the Last Man, I think it's going to be on par because it's on FX. It's it's a on Hulu on Hulu, but it's more adult oriented. Or Sweet Tooth, I realize this is more family oriented yeah. kind of a show. So I yes, I think it depends on the show. It depends on the source material. Definitely, yeah. I agree that if I read something that's dark, and then I go watch a show and it's not that. I'm going to be like off, I'm thrown off a little yeah. bit. I'm like, this is not that. But listen, Sweet Tooth, when it works, it works. When it's good, it's good. I, I For me, there's just moments I was just kind of... Yeah, because I haven't read any of the graphic novel and I yeah. loved every episode of the show. I think it so, was great. So the teenagers in, in the graphic novel... That was my least favorite part of the whole show. They're not teenagers. They're these wild adults that wear animal masks yeah. And their their leader is this psychotic killer that has three hybrid dog children on leashes, and they mm. will just attack and kill anything. Yeah. Um, so the teenage I think it definitely was, was really cringy for it was me. Definitely sanitized to oh yeah make it more palatable to a more wider audience than and it should be. Yeah. I think Sweet Tooth. I think it lends itself to be. Uh, viewed a by wider, yeah. a wider audience. I do agree with that. Yeah. Um, so I don't fault it for what it did. I don't think it's yeah. a bad pro. I don't think it's a bad show for what it changed. Mm. But, uh, I just want I want those elements of what I brought up to be a little bit tighter. Mm. Um, that's all. I don't want stupid things like that. I don't want yeah. like Sweet Tooth to go off and be like, I can't find my dog when literally it's right yeah. there. Which is a stuffed animal, by the way, not like an actual dog. Yes. Yeah. Um, they did keep the dream elements in there, which are kind of cool. That's yeah. in the graphic novel. Um, so I'm happy they kept that. That is a yeah. more darker element they kept in the show. Yeah. Um, and the whole uh, Dr. Singh part part is like a total. That's yeah. Um, like the so, episode where they, they, like you were talking about last, I think you watched some of it last week where they're at the party and the guy just gets a bloody nose and like, yeah. They wrap him in saran wrap and just burn his house down. Yeah. So listen, they flush <laughs> like, okay. out. They flush out the doctor. Yeah, um, way more. Life. I've heard that from a lot of people. It's way more story for him than it is in the graphic novel. So in the graphic novel, you meet the doctor as the doctor that is just experimenting on hybrids. That's yeah. it. You don't have any context of who he is. Yeah. So really, uh, the sh- when I say the show did does well when it does well that's an element it did very well i was more compelled by his story than sweet tooth story at some point yeah, i was yeah. more into that well, i think it's just because that story like, this the you're able to uh, relate to his character more than you would sweet tooth the pandemic helped a little bit big yeah. well pandemic, knowing that like yeah, i think yeah. also the thing of I had the same thought process that I was like, oh man, I want more of that guy's story than I do the deer kid. Because I think it's just because like we were saying with the pandemic and everything, and it's both being relatively newly married, like knowing like what that would be like if there was like some kind of disease that came out and affected everybody and like your wife has it. Yeah. I understand like his thought process of no matter what it is, I'm going to try to fix it i'm going to try to figure out something to keep her around you know yeah and spoilers i mean basically he the the original doctor is is, has cancer she gives him the book because she says she has cancer yeah she says we find out later what's going on but uh he he's the only other doctor around he trusts him to take this book and continue that he just like tricks him into taking the book yeah Basically, they have to kill hybrid kids, experiment, and take from them yeah, to like make a cure. Yeah, it's like spinal tap them to get the, their, like, whatever, to 
fend off the virus it's like right. stem cells they need their stem cells or something and to keep his wife alive well, the, the, the way that they explained it or the way they show it in the show or talk about it in the show it seems very much in the way of like it's a stem cell situation like you need to get like bone marrow or something from right these hybrids to use as a medicine to, yeah yeah because that's and, all the hybrids are there's not on them are growing up enough to be humans right and so or basically not, adults i should say the so, big head forces his hand yeah that he's gonna have to do this if he wants to keep his wife alive yeah so yeah yeah i don't want to ruin too much about it i mean definitely watch it yourself and whoever the actor is it's fantastic that plays the the big bad Oh, yeah, he looks he the like same in the graphic people. novel. He he, yeah. he looks the same in the graphic novel. I thought he was like three different people. I, I thought he was three different actors during the course of the show. Like, I was like, oh, is that? Oh, it's not that guy. It's this some other guy. Oh, it's no, it's not that guy either. I've never. He's I don't so know good at it that he plays like different. He like looks like. He reminds me of uh, Woody Harrelson from uh, uh, Planet of the Apes when he was in that movie. He had the same kind of style. That like bald head and the big beard the sunglasses yeah john malkovich played that same kind of character in uh empire of the sun it was like an homage almost to that it was like me he looked like very... like jim carrey's um in sonic at the end yes. when he becomes yeah. dr robotnik yes dr robotnik <laughs> yeah it looks like he was like an homage to all those characters um so I highly recommend watching the show and I, I read the graphic novel if you can. Yeah. It's great. Um, yeah, no, the graphic novel is on my list of things to read after. Two different beasts. I mean, yeah. one's very dark and simple. It doesn't go much deep into a lot of things where this does. Mm. And I like the fact that Gus, I, the kid who plays Gus is amazing. He's a great yeah, actor. He's a very good job. But sometimes it's, it's just like you want to slap that kid because you're just well, like, just the age group right anywhere. Now. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to do what I want. Well, it's just a kid um, who doesn't ever had any parenting. I know. Really. I, so I, get like, I get it. I get it. But I, for, we're going to give our rating a 1 out of 10 like I always do. Okay. Uh, for me, I give it a 7. And I thought about this all week. I wow. Know, 7. 7. I think, no, a seven's good. I, um, I, I, after watching this, I finished it on Thursday. I've been thinking about it all weekend and just the word good is the only thing I can say about this. It's just good. It's enjoyable for me. I think it can expand and get better for season two. I think they can take the critique, the the criticism of season one and make it a better show season two. Mm. It's only the beginning. Um, So I I give it a seven. Mark, what do you I would one? agree that what your synopsis is that you had just said was, I would probably give it. Now, this is against like all other shows, not just on its own. No, it's on its own. I'm not I know, but I'm saying anything. just comparatively to other shows, like, do I really like, was I like captured by it that I want to see the whole season through that I want to like, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. I would probably give it an eight but with like an asterisk. It's an eight for a Netflix show. Okay. You know, it's interesting I, that I this is a Warner it, Brothers show. Yeah, it is. I, yeah. It yeah. originally was going to be on Hulu. Yeah, I feel like, well, they, how come like, this is on HBO Max? lost it. How come this is not on HBO? It's a Warner Brothers production. Because there was right before the whole HBO Max thing happened. No, this must have been signed on. There were a slew of properties that were not that they were sold off before they did the whole uh, HBO Max deal. Yeah. I mean... HBO didn't get, like, connected to Warner Brothers until recently. Well, I needed this to say, so you give, an eight, you give it an eight, the asterisk being for a Netflix show? Yeah. Because it's just there, there's... I'm kind of like the more of these shows we're seeing, like The Boys on Amazon Prime, uh, Why the Last Man on FX on Hulu, uh, Mandalorian nope. and all that on Disney Plus. It's like the, there's different, and even The Omen on uh, Amazon Prime, uh, or Good Omens, that's the name of it. 
on Amazon Prime, which is another show I think you should watch. I know. I really want to watch it. Uh, there's just different styles of the way they do the shows. Yeah. And different, like, almost, I want to, like, say quality. Netflix kind of puts a lot of filler sometimes. Yeah. Netflix has a tendency to kind of drag it out more. Yeah. Or, like, this easily could have been a six-episode season. I think so. I think those two episodes could have been gone. Or combined really, into one. Right. I don't but they kind of like try necessary. to stretch things out too much sometimes. And they fall into very much of a kind of like how to like a basic cable format. Mid-season slump. <laughs> well, just like just the series themselves like fall into like this like formulaic tv progression as opposed to like the other ones kind of like treat the shows as individual movies right 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 netflix had a tendency to treat everything like it's a show yeah yeah I mean, like it's the best of the stuff that's come out on netflix in a while it's not as good as stranger things it's not as bad as uh jupiter rising right right and I think Sweet so that's like the, has the potential to be as good as Stranger Things. I think that's potential. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just the yeah. first season, so you can't knock it up that high yet. Yeah, yeah. But. I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, it's just a good show, entertaining. It's fun. I think yeah. if you got younger kids, they would enjoy it. Um, yeah. I think it works on both levels for adults and uh, younger kids, um, preteens, teen, teenagers. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it, like, I, I'm not reading the graphic novel watching the show i was like oh wow this is like made for kids this is like a kid show kind of it's like yeah. almost like a hunger games age group yeah i mean teenager harry yeah. potter like that kind of thing right i agree i feel like after episode three i got that feeling in four and five yeah I got that. yeah is there is, who is that claire claire walking yes. on it? yeah she's homesick today so She's homesick or homesick? Yeah. She's homesick. Oh, tell you know what? Uh, we're watching on Netflix. Speaking of Netflix, um, is the um, Billy, is it the 24 um, personalities of Billy? What's his name? It's really good. Okay. Uh, we got to watch the last part this week. It's like the 24 personalities of Billy. He's, he was a rapist in the 70s. And he has like 24 personalities. Freaking crazy. <laughs> All right. I'll let her know. Yeah. Maybe she'll start watching that today as she's lounging on the couch. Uh, it, it's the story of Billy Milligan. Okay. It's called Monsters Inside The 24 Faces of Billy Milligan. Okay. It's good. It's real good. Four I'll episodes. Let her know. Yeah, let her know. Okay. Um, anyway, that's our review, of Sweet Tooth. Yes. Um, I think we did but definitely watch it yourself. Now. Don't listen to us. Yeah, make up your mind. Make up your own minds. Watch it for yourself, and you might love it way more than we did. Or you might dislike it more than we did. Yeah. But everyone has their own opinion. Yeah. I and think overall. Oh, say we're... can you? Okay, this is getting weird, Mark. <laughs> Are you going to burn my house down? My pinky shaking. Do I got the? <laughs> yeah. I got... I got it. That's what it is. The pinky shake. It wasn't a bloody nose. It's the pinky thing. That's what it was. Never is a pinky thing. That's right. Never. Uh, which is an odd thing because, like, if you're holding something, like if you're holding yeah. a glass and then you see the pinky, like, start shaking, you yeah. know you're in trouble. You got yeah. it. You got it. You got the whatever got, it is. You got, you got the Rona. You got the Rona. All right. We shall wrap it up, Mark. We um, we'll be back next Tuesday. Yes. And uh, hopefully, I'll, uh, we'll be talking about the finale of What If? And um, yes. I'll be jumping into Why the Last Man this week. Oh, boy. I'm That's very excited. I'm very excited. You should be. All right. Like and subscribe, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye, everybody.